Ladies, it's Tuesday. Who's got a nice warm cup of tea today? I hope you do. I can't believe this weather. So I'm not sure where everyone's watching from, but if you're in this area, you know we had snow on Mother's Day and we had snow yesterday. I got out for a walk this morning. It was beautiful, but still chilly. But you know what? We're on our way to warm weather. So that is great. And ladies, I am so excited to introduce you to my friend Karen Baring today, who is the owner of Busy Women. And we're going to get into all of that stuff and all about what Busy Women uh, is about. I am a member there. It's an amazing group, community. It's wonderful. Um, but first, I want to talk to you about what's happening at Glam Jewels. So I know a lot of places um, are opening their doors right now. And um, I'm going to put my earphones on here. Um, we are not. We're going to keep our doors closed for a little while um, and just see how things uh, sort of progress over time. As you guys know, um, um, my mom and I, my mom has been at the studio helping me to work, not right now during COVID. She's been uh, on her own and I go and bring groceries to her um, once a week and we have a lovely so socially distanced chat from six feet away. Um, but uh, just to, you know, sort of protect family and just be extra, extra careful. I'm going to continue my business online for now and not open my doors just quite yet. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> so um, before I bring Karen on, I just want to let you all know that uh, if you are interested in shopping our showroom, you can do that today. Uh, we have our Swarovski crystal layering pieces at 25% off. And then there's also um, some new things that I have introduced. If you haven't had a chance to take a look, I've actually designed beautiful little kits for young girls uh, where they can make a necklace for themselves and they can safe drop a second necklace kit to their bestie and do it together over FaceTime because um, I, I developed a YouTube video for these girls so they can watch me make the necklace and follow along and um, anyway they can have a lot of fun and and hang out with their bestie that way so go ahead and uh, check that out and then the other thing um, that I'm doing is uh, some lovely little uh, friendship bracelets for you to send to your best friend to your mom to your aunt to your cousin to anyone you're thinking of and the cool thing with those uh, they're $35 and you get three beautiful little bracelets and you also uh, can send me a picture and a little note of 20 words or less, and I'll make a beautiful little card to send along with it. So there you have it. That is, you know what, I'm just looking at comments here. Okay, good, everybody is watching and on. So I'm just gonna reach out and see what's happening with Karen, because I don't see her here to join on, so let's just make sure our technology is working um perfect okay i think she's coming on now <laughs> great oh look at colleen is on janice is watching this is so great and there's karen so i was i was uh joking last week um when I was interviewing Annette, I, I told her she had to wait in my green room. So for this app that I use called StreamYard, my guests kind of wait in a little waiting room, a virtual waiting room, and then I bring them on. So this is really cool. So Karen, here she comes. Hi, beautiful. Huh? How are you? How are you? I'm good. You know what? I was stuttering a bit uh, starting the live today. Oh, I don't, I don't know what it, you know, <laughs> it's so fun. So Karen, um, I'm a part of a challenge Karen's doing right now through her busy women group and it's an accountability challenge and we have to go on three times a day 
and we have to tell our our friends what it is we're doing for the day. We have to do our elevator pitch, and then at the end of the day, we have to share the results of what we've done. And uh, it's a lot of like you got to have it together. So oh, I just oh, they feel oh, like oh. I let loose right now. I was like little 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 little. The thing though, as women, we're so good at recognizing everybody else's accomplishments, and we're so awful to ourselves. And we'll, yeah. they, we've got these to-do lists that can have 20 things. We can ping off 15 and we'll go to, to bed at the end of the day saying, oh, I didn't finish those five I needed to do, right? Yeah. So having yourself accountable just makes you realize what's the most important things I need to accomplish today and then accomplish those so you can go to sleep feeling happy. Exactly. And this is why I'm a big fan of yours because every night I go to sleep feeling happy since Not a I lot met of you. Say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm delighted to be here. Oh, I'm so happy to have you, Karen. So Karen runs a group called Busy Women, and it's a huge community. How many members do you have, Karen? I think we're Are closing you? in on 3,000 on the Facebook group. We have meetup groups, and then we have our mastermind community, too, that's getting close to 100 women in our mastermind uh, groups where we strategically learn and build together for our businesses. Oh, that's fantastic. So before we dive into busy women and all that good stuff, is this what you always wanted to do when you grew up? Like, was this your dream? No, no, I I, I didn't even know that this existed. Right? Okay. So I, I wish I knew what I wanted to do. I think I went as a kid, you, you, we all go through that point where we want to be a teacher. And then you think you want to be a mom and you don't know that perhaps you could be a teacher and a mom at the same time. Right. And I, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I stumbled on being an entrepreneur. And as soon as I fell into it, I was in love. And I consider myself certifiably unemployable at this time. I don't think <laughs> I could get um, work for somebody else anymore. I would rather yeah. work twice as hard for myself and not have any sort of cap or red tape. It's beautiful. Yeah, that's amazing. So before you started the Busy Women Group, what were you doing? Oh, I did everything. So yeah, uh, my very us. first job was at a pizza place. It was at a Gino's Pizza. I worked there Friday and Saturday nights. And I had so much pizza during that time that I did not eat pizza for five years. This is a true story. For five really? years after, I could not <laughs> touch it because I was so saturated with pizza. After that, I went into, um, I worked at my church. So I was the evening receptionist at uh, at the church that we went to. From there, once we got married, we I did. Uh, I was on the mid side of trustees and bankruptcy, and that was really difficult. Because that's at the time I realized I was young. I was in my early twenties. I realized situations can dictate your life, and something can happen to you that you weren't planning for. So, it, um, the people that had to file for for bankruptcy. It wasn't just people who did not know how to use the system and use their credit cards properly. There were a lot of people who got sick and their oh. debts racked up that way, right? And yeah. they still had to file for bankruptcy because of a situation. So I went from there to the polar opposite and to hedge funds and mutual funds, downtown Toronto, um, again on the admin side. And I realized it's so much nicer to have money than not have money. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I've, uh, and then once I had my kids, I just, I became an entrepreneur. Oh, that's fantastic. What a great background, like to see both sides like that, right? Yeah. That's eye opening. Right? That's and it, it does. When they say that some people are only two or three months away from filing for bankruptcy, it's true. So please mm -hmm. set yourself up for success. Yeah. Wow. And then, so your first business that you started was not Busy Women. What was it? <laughs> It was an indoor play center and I knew nothing about business, absolutely nothing about business. And all I knew, because I was a bit of a smart ass, is that there was only one um, play center in Oakville and I wanted to be bigger. That was my only okay. thing, my only. So I've never had a business, let alone a physical location business. And I opened up a 5,500 square foot play center. When I had two kids, they were one and three. And I thought I could keep them at my play center with me full time because it was a child friendly space and run okay. a business um, and have staff and do multiple parties. We would have up to 10 or 12 birthday parties sometimes per day. And I thought all of this would work so well together. <gasps> Four hours. Wow. I, 
It lasted four hours with my kids there because one of my kids went and ate someone else's birthday cake because they didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the That's lesson. amazing. Oh, yeah. wow. That's so fa So how many years did you do that? I think I had the play center for perhaps three years. And what happened was I realized at that point I needed a community mm -hmm. and I needed support and I wanted to help other people in return. For example, instead of interviewing three accountants, what if you knew an accountant? Mm -hmm. And then that, that way I don't have to interview so many people. I can uh, use somebody that you know. So it's a win-win for everybody. So I put it out there that I wanted to join, start this group. And that's how Busy Women started. It wasn't never meant to be a women's only group, but because I had a play center, it was only women that read my newsletter. So the very first okay. meeting was a bunch of women that came to it because they all read the newsletter. And having a bunch of women together to support each other was such a great thing, I never looked back. So what happened was busy women started to grow and the play center was there and I had two young ones at home and I couldn't do it all. So we sold the play center and I continued with busy women. Oh, fantastic. So how many members did you have when you first started, Karen? It was, it was, it was an eclectic group. So everyone would show up yeah. to the play center after hours, there'd be about 20 of us there. And okay. we would know, we'd pull all the play center couches together in the middle of the play center. So you'd have the slides and you'd have everything else uh, around. And our questions were like, I don't know what I'm doing. Do you know what I'm doing? I don't know what you're <laughs> like, I don't know what I'm doing. Do you know? And we'd just go around the room and, and we really felt a lot of us did not know what we were doing. But mm -hmm. if we took a little bit of information from you and a little bit of information from someone else, and we wrote it all down. We had roadmaps and that was oh. the best thing is to have these roadmaps where we can all help each other. Wow, that's amazing. And so I met you two years ago now. I think I've been a member of one of your masterminds for two years. And yeah. one of the things that I love about you is what a great negotiator you are. And you've really taught me to, when I look at something like really take a step back look at the pros and cons of things like don't like my t my tendency is always to be reactive like okay we got a problem here's how we're going to fix it boom 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 right and you're in like no no let's take it so do you do you feel that that personality trait like do you feel that you learn that by building this group or is that more your upbringing and you know, growing up with a brother and a sister, <laughs> you know, I know a little bit about your background, but I certainly yeah. had to negotiate my brother and sister. My brother's five years older than me. My sister's three years older than me. And so my brother was born and then my sister was born. And I really think my brother wanted when my mom was pregnant, he wanted a, um, another brother and I was mm -hmm. born. So I okay. became his playmate. So I had to learn chess because he liked chess and I'd had to play soccer because he liked playing soccer. But the good thing about that is when he taught me to play chess, I hated it until I realized it's a game of strategy. And what you learn in chess is actually what you learn in life. I think so many people don't realize they're in a game of chess in life. So when you take a step back and you strategize, you can figure out your next move and potential next moves for the other person. And you don't have to be nasty with it. You can figure out a way to navigate so both of you win. Ah, okay. Uh, that's so I, I love it. Yeah. I think that my biggest, one of the biggest piece of advice that I can offer everyone is so often you think that the other person has the upper hand, but the other person is not feeling that way. So always know the strengths mm -hmm. you bring to any negotiation, know what the other person needs, and then start analyzing what you're willing to sacrifice and what you need to keep to make it a successful negotiation for you. Oh, that's great. So, the other thing I love about you is your fascination with the brain. I'm so fascinated with the brain. I know. I have never met any. So when I met Karen, well, I met Karen. I joined the group. We went. I did a couple of my mastermind classes with you. And then you, you kept referring to the brain. And I was like, wow, you know a lot about the brain. And then I think we had a, a little text between the two of us. And you said, no, like I'm obsessed with the brain. And then you started showing me your brain jewelry collection, your brain. Do you guys have that guy at the desk with the explosive brain? 
Oh, I love yeah. this guy. Oh, you know, <laughs> so this no, head blows up. <laughs> yeah, I gotta find it. I think my my son borrowed it. So oh, okay. It's squishy. It's one of those squishy toys. That you hold it, and it's a guy's head, and his brain explodes. So I'm gonna have to try to find it. Yeah. I, it up, I, oh, guess. I love um, that. I have this one. So I yes. I <laughs> Tell us about that one. <laughs> Tell so us sad. about so that brain. This this brain came from the dollar store, you know, at, at Halloween, where uh, they have all the different Halloween stuff. And sadly, I saw it as part of the the Halloween display. And I thought, I really want this, so I took it home. I painted it, and then I thought, <laughs> not only do I need the brain on my desk, but how great would it be to be like a business card holder? So, <laughs> so but my desk is full of toys, and I wanted to share some of them with you. I know that yeah. we're going to discuss the brain. Mm -hmm. I think toys are so great to give you a little bit of space, but also help you remember what you need to focus on. So my, I've got more toys, I think, than any other adult, except perhaps Michael from The Office. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a lot of toys on my desk. I use them. I play with them. I've got fidget spinners and I've got other things. But really, I find with your brain, you always want to work smarter, not harder. And having things that can prime your brain will help you get you what you need to do. That's great. So how how did your fascination with the brain start, Karen? Like, what was it that triggered that for you? Was it? It wasn't even for myself. I was going through a time in my family where my daughter wasn't feeling very well, and she would needed. Um, she was feeling a bit anxious, and I mm -hmm. couldn't figure out how to support her. And at the same time, my husband wasn't well. He was sick, and with that, he was dealing with his own mental health issues too. He was very sick. And I just remember feeling, okay, out of four of us in our family, two of us are not feeling well in different ways. And likely it stems from the brain, because if we can make their brain feel better, maybe we can make them feel better. So I started researching for them, for both of them, my, my husband, because he wasn't well enough to do any of this research himself, and for my daughter, because she was looking to me as a source of guidance and I didn't know. So when I started researching the brain, there are roadmaps to help your brain with everything. And your brain is so cool. Like truly, I can talk about it for hours and hours and hours. Let's do it. Yeah, so, yeah I'd, love to, I'd love to share a little bit about the brain. Now, here's the thing though. I'm just a regular person who researches the brain. So I apologize yeah. if my numbers aren't right or if my um, percentages aren't right. I'm not coming from a place of going to university or, or school for studying the brain. It's just somebody who likes to read about the brain. I must read something about the brain every single week for the last 10 years. I've got books that I have truly that are right content on the brain. So yeah. I've got, I've, I filled one book up just on brain content. So I had to start a second one. The brain is such an incredible thing. So whether or not you're a female entrepreneur, an entrepreneur, or you're just somebody who's watching. If you know how to help your brain, you could do such amazing things. Your brain is three pounds of your entire body, give or take a little bit, males and females are different, but it takes up 20% of your caloric intake every day and 20% of your oxygen. Wow. So, yeah, so if you know that, this little thing is taking up so much, it looks that, sorry, that looks like a face. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, a happy this, brain. That's right. <laughs> this little thing requires so much from you because it keeps your body alive. If if you got into a car accident, unfortunately, or any accident, you lost your arm or your leg, your body can still function. Something happens to your brain and your entire body shuts down. So you need to understand the importance of it. But then you can start playing with the, the algorithms a little bit. Like, did you know you have 60,000 to 90,000 thoughts a day. Oh, but 96% are the exact same thoughts from yesterday. Wow. Yeah. So, oh, so you my wonder God. why we are creatures of habit. It's because 96% of what you think is exactly what you thought the day before and the day before and day before, because we use these roadmaps to make life easy for us. The problem is, the good thing is about a roadmap, it can take you from point A to B easily. The bad thing about a roadmap, if it's not a good roadmap for you anymore, you're still gonna take it until you shut down that road. Right. Wow. Yeah, oh yeah, see, I, I really, I, I am such the geek that, Number one, I go to Comic Con. So if that's not geeky enough, you know, <laughs> I hope he dresses a brain. <laughs> I 
<laughs> my Pinky Jamie, in the brain. Yeah, my son Jamie, he often dresses like, but mind you, he's he's now twelve. So I I took him when he was younger, and he'd always dress in a Star Wars thing. Um, no, I didn't dress like the brain, but I would go around <laughs> looking for brain jewelry, and the people at Comic Con thought I was crazy. So that's a, <laughs> that's a level of geekiness we've got going on here. Um, but if you know that the brain, if you think the same thoughts every day, or the majority, 96%, you change your thoughts, you change your brain, and you change the roadmap. So you've got to physically and mentally realize, wait a minute, if I'm doing the same things over and over and over again, and I don't like my results, I need to change it up. Yeah, that's the definition of insanity, right? Absolutely. Doing the same thing and expecting a different result. So um Karen you've shared a couple of exercises with me to really help like create new habits you know uh new thought patterns that I'd love for you to share some of that stuff like the ritual you have every night yeah again it's, it's a little bit OCD yeah but with your brain if you think of it as a field and it's it's a field with nothing in it it's a cornfield and now you start walking back and forth in that cornfield. You're going to make a little bit of a road, like a, a path. And mm -hmm. if you keep doing it every single day, that path gets stronger and stronger and more obvious and bigger. Eventually, someone's going to say, this is such a good path. Let's pave it. And then a car starts now going down that path. And then two cars. And then it becomes a highway. It's the exact same thing with your brain. When you want to create a habit, you do that. When you have a bad habit that you need to change, you start minimizing the attention you put to it. And that highway becomes one, one road, which then becomes the path, which then goes away. So you need to recognize, number one, that really they say it takes 21 days to build a habit. That's inaccurate a lot of times. That's the minimum, not the maximum. It could take up to 67 days to build a habit. So a lot of times a habit doesn't stick. It's not because you're not doing a good job at it. It's that you're selling yourself short in terms of time. So when you need to develop a habit, go at it for at least three months, or a little bit more, and it'll become easier and easier. So a lot of the stuff I do is now a force of habit. I, um, I write my mantra. Mantra is really good for your brain. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So if you tell your brain that you, you can do things, your brain has no option but to believe you as long as it's not so lofty that it's unrealistic. So I have a mantra that I write every single day, 25 times a day. I've been doing this for the last three years. It's the same line over and over again. But what's really cool is your brain will understand a shortcut. So if you don't want to write your full name as Karen, for example, and I write the letter K, my brain will then know that that stands for Karen. So you can do short form with these mantras and it can help you uh, with your brain thinking that you could succeed. Oh, that's great. You know what I've always been fascinated with, and I don't know if you have the answer to this, but when we exercise and eat well, we feel fantastic. But what is it about us that, <laughs> that always goes back to the chips and goes back to the, ah, I don't feel like it today. Like, I understand it's that, you know, really sticking to that 67 days, but but it's always fascinated me that why is that so hard when this thing actually feels really good and has great rewards, but there's so much pain to get you to do it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, I don't even... Well. You know why? Because the potato chips are immediate gratification. Mm -hmm. I open the bag of chip, I eat a chip, and I'm happy. Whereas right. the workout is going to take a while for the happy hormones to kick in. And until they kick in, you're not quite happy, right? So it's so yeah. much easier to sit on the couch, eat the chips, and be happy eating your chips than to go 20 minutes into a workout before the happy hormones start kicking off for you. Yeah. 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 I wish we could change that. I know. Wouldn't that be <laughs> nice if there was a pill for that? <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. Can I share um, a little bit more about the brain? Yeah. Keep yeah. going. I love it. Um, what I think is really fascinating is that your brain will store things at night. So you've got short-term memories and long-term memories. And when you go to sleep, I, I only recently learned this, your brain has its own um, cleaning system. So from your chin down, your body has a, a system that goes on at night to clean it. Your brain has its very own system that it does. It's not the same as the rest of your body. So it will sort out the garbage 
Short-term memory is you'll remember what you ate for dinner yesterday, right? But you might not remember what you ate three weeks ago for dinner because your, body, your brain remembered it. It's not short-term, but I don't need to keep it for long-term. But you might remember what you ate, your meal was for your wedding because that was a long-term memory. So your brain will clean out all the stuff that you don't need. But in your brain, you have enough knowledge to fill, nine, on average, 90 million books. That's the amount of content the average person has in their brain. Yeah, it's <sighs> fascinating. Oh, okay. Are you going to talk about the filing cabinets? Yeah. I love so the filing that, cabinets. Yes. It's, if you think of that knowledge in filing cabinets, mm -hmm. 90 million uh, books worth of knowledge. What happens is your brain has the answers for almost everything, but it's going to go to previous answers. So if I try ice cream, I'm immediately going to say, oh, I remember this ice cream. It tastes like what? Something I had as a kid or something here, because you'll go back to the 90 million books for content. The problem is, is when you ask your brain a question, it feels the need to go through those 90 million books to find the answer. And this is why sometimes you might ask yourself, oh, there's there's a song on the radio, I can't remember who sings it, and it could take you a couple days and suddenly you get the answer. It's because your brain has started to go through those books. I call all that content your filing cabinets. The problem is those are called open loops. And on average, the average person has 300 open loops in your brain. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound like a lot, but if you've got a faucet that has a drip, no big deal, that's one faucet. But if you've got 300 faucets in your house and they're all dripping, that's gonna cause brain drain for you. So you can't work optimally because your brain is still looking for answers. Yeah, so close the loops. Don't ask yourself those questions <laughs> or find the solution to the question so that way you can sleep better and um, your brain can be on fire for you. Oh, that's great. So Karen, sorry, on this program, sometimes we cut out a little bit. So I'm not sure if you um, had said this, but the whole idea of going to bed at night and, you know, you have this question, it's like, oh, God, I got to figure this out. And it's stressing you out. I love how you always say, just ask the question to your brain and let it find it. And usually in the morning, you'll be presented with the answer. It'll go through all the filing cabinets. Yeah, the brain will do the filing when you're asleep. It's, it's so awesome. You don't have to do anything. So the first thing is you want to ask the question. And I talk about the brain also as a hotel room with different lights in different rooms. The more lights you can light up, the better it is in your brain. So if you orally ask the question, it uses a different part of your brain than if you just ask it in your head. So orally right. ask the question. If you were to write it down as well, it's gonna light up different parts of your brain. If you were to write it down with your um, non-dominant hand, that too is gonna to light up different parts of your brain. The okay. More parts of your brain that you can light up, the more filing um, cabinets your brain can go through it at night to help you. And then there's different ways to get the answer. So often people find the answers when they're in the shower or when they're driving. It's because your brain is allowed the opportunity to think without um, being restricted. Okay. Oh, that's great. That's and yeah, it's so a couple other things I want to chat with you about the lighting up the brain. I love that. And um, we got to talk about the wins, the 50 wins oh, with yeah. lighting up the brain. Okay. So that's one thing. The other thing though, I did want to interject with, so um, Karen has her mantra that she writes out. How many times you do it 50 times a night you write that mantra? I write it on a piece of paper. Um, right. It's a, um, a, a sketch pad because okay. when you're writing things that are more creative, they say don't use lines because the lines will automatically put your brain inside a box. Now I've got to start here, I got to finish here, my words have to be this size, and you put your brain in a box. So mm -hmm. I always prefer, um, even now, non lined yeah. paper for everything that I do because then it allows the creativity. So I'll keep writing it until the, the piece of paper and it's this size every single day. Yeah. Sorry, I'll put it this way. Uh, it's that size every single day. I'll, I'll write out the same sentence over and over and over again. And um, 
So it might be anywhere from 20 to 30 times, just depending on how big my writing is. Okay, perfect. So Karen had talked to me about this and I tried it and I, I enjoyed it. And then I called Karen and I said, you know, I don't know. I'm kind of zoning out on it. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not committing to it. And Karen said, oh, okay, well, your brain's just working a little differently. I have a great exercise for you, which I freaking love, by the way. Are you so, doing it? Yeah. So Karen said, what you need to do is before you go to bed at, at night, think of something you're grateful for. And it could be anything. It could be, I'm grateful for a lollipop. And then start writing about that lollipop and why you're grateful. And what you said would happen is absolutely true, Karen. It's all of a sudden, it's like all these childhood memories come back. Stuff that I thought was long forgotten, buried in there is like coming out just like little details, like something that I saw, something that I smelled, something my mom said, something my dad said. Like, it's so cool. And, and it has been very, very comforting for me right now during COVID because yeah. like that's what we're all going through we're stuck right we're sitting in our houses or we're going to our place of work by ourselves you know I'm alone here at my studio so I can come to work but you're sort of always in that same environment and what this has really allowed my my brain is like opening up and all of these vivid memories are coming in yeah. and it's like oh my god this is really cool I look forward to it it's an escape so yeah, That's a great exercise is, too. Once you start flicking on little pieces of your brain, it might flick on other pieces of your brain. One memory might make you think of another memory. And mm -hmm. it's so good to use all these parts of the brain that you haven't used before. So I actually have three different things I do every night before I go to bed. Number one is I have one book for my mantras. Even my kids and my husband know. I've been doing that for maybe three or four years. Uh, I don't miss a day. Uh, even when I'm falling asleep, I will keep writing it as I'm falling asleep. Uh, that's the last thoughts I want in my head are the facts that I can do anything. I can accomplish what I want to achieve. So that's really, really important to me. So that's the last thing I do before I go to sleep. But before I do that, there's two other books. And I keep all the books separate because, again, I'm a little OCD that way. One is that gratitude book. So every day I find something small. I know they talk about gratitude and being grateful. I personally had a hard time when they said, write five things with that you're grateful for. And I'd write friends, family, community, my house, and you know, opportunity. But I never felt connected to it because they were so big. But get me to write out a full page about my daughter and why she's fantastic or my son or my husband. Now I got to fill out this whole piece of paper about them and it gives me an opportunity to go really minute and, and appreciate everything. So every day I write a, a gratitude. And sometimes I'll try to think of what I wanna write about first thing in the morning so then I can look for it. Like it could be as simple as flowers. So then I'd look outside and I see all these pretty flowers in the backyard and I'll think about that as well. So writing out a gratitude every day is so nice. I find it very, very helpful and mm -hmm. uh, rewarding. And the final thing is I do, an audit of my day. It sounds crazy, but I actually have a, um, a book that I do a little audit. What And I love this book, and it makes me happy to go through it. It's And the audit includes things of what's the random act of kindness I did today? I need to look after my own community. So what's the one thing I did that supported someone else? And Another thing I audit, what's something nice someone did for me? Because sometimes we forget there's so many kind people and things people have done things for you. What's something someone did for you? What made you laugh? If you had a day where you really got to pay attention and you can't remember what made you laugh, you got to change that, right? Yeah. yeah. I know what made me laugh today. So when Karen and I were testing StreamYard... <laughs> I brought up an old, good old song called Funky Town, and we both started doing the robot dance together. <laughs> we were, we were going to synchronize that, and that's how we were going to start. Yeah. yeah. Laughs like this. I, that's, yeah. that's really, always go to your 10, 10, 10, 10. Am I going to remember this 10 years from now, 10 months from now, 10 weeks from now, 10 days from now, or even 10 hours from now? And that's how you should really use that, that's a good measurement for the pecking order of what's important and what's not important. If it's not going to matter to you 10 years from now or 10 months from now or 10 weeks from now, why are you stressing about it, right? Yes, that's so right. And that's such a great way to like let it go. We're oh getting lots of comments from people, Karen. Is it okay? I'm, oh, I'm gonna, 
Yeah, and I wanted to just say, if anybody has questions for Karen, I will take a peruse through and uh, we can ask uh, Karen some Absolutely. questions. I People love are that. loving the brain talk. Donna, Donna Smith Major says, I always love your brain talk. <laughs> I love so, it, right? Yeah, this is great. And um, the other thing, Karen, I'm just looking at my questions here, um, is uh, you're also, um, I loved what you were saying about keeping the brain healthy and how dehydrated it is in the morning. And the first yeah. thing we should do is chug back a glass of water, right? Glass of warm water, they say ideally. Don't do the cold warm. water. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and even coffee. Coffee is great, but it's dehydrating in itself. Okay. So a warm glass of water because you're dehydrated. Your brain is 75% water. So it really needs the support. And then yes. you've got that gray squishy matter in there. Of that squishy matter, that's 60% fat. So right. this kind of stuff would be 60% fat. What I find most ironic, and I might be wrong with this, but all the research I read is kind of the same. Mm -hmm. that the gray stuff, sorry, this is... This is so sad. This is pink and gold because it matches my branding colors. But yeah, really and it's in the picture. So if for anyone who saw the post Karen, of Karen being on the show, the Treat Yourself Tuesday show today, <laughs> I have to get a name for this. Uh, that's the picture I used of you holding that's your right. brain. That's yeah, right. I love my brain. Um, yeah. But your brain is made out of omega-3. A good portion of that fat that we're speaking about is omega-3 fatty acids. I find it extremely fascinating that your, your body cannot create that fat itself so you always have to make sure you're using and taking food consuming food that has the omega-3 to support your brain so supplements or, or a fish or other things can really help with your brain health there's mm -hmm. there's great articles you can read all about superfoods i encourage you to read it and and try to put some of those into your life you know what I love? A lot of those brain foods look like brains. Walnuts, Walnuts Brussels yeah. sprouts. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like, like the earth is trying to help you out. Yeah, like, exactly. The brain eat it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Have you ever had aki, you know, from Jamaica? It looks like no. brain too. It looks kind of like scrambled eggs when you cook it, but when when they come out, it's like a little fruit. And when oh. it comes out, it looks like uh, a brain. So I'll have to see if Aki is a good I, brain. I haven't had it, but it's in that song, right? Um, is it? Yeah, isn't it like Aki and rice and fish is nice? Right? I don't or, know that song. Yeah, I like a uh, song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you don't. You might not want me to sing it for you. I'm gonna have to find <laughs> it. Um, any other questions about the brain? Um, let's see here. Water always drink. Oh yeah. Water, so Andrew water, is yeah. just saying, yeah, water and uh, Sue Harvey saying fascinating topic. Yeah, this is great. And then Jen Gratshaw says, I think Karen makes most people's brains explode. <laughs> I'm going to think that's a compliment. So thank you, Jen. Yeah. Um, can we maybe talk about while, while you're going through, can we talk about yeah. sleep patterns? About, sorry? Sleep and your yes, brain? Yes, please. So many of us do not sleep properly. Mm -hmm. And the problem is we'll say, we'll catch up on your sleep. You can never catch up on your sleep. You will need more sleep, but it doesn't mean you could catch up every day is an individual day mm -hmm. and you need to have enough sleep when you sell yourself short. You know how we spoke about your cleaning going on in your brain at night? Yeah. Your brain cannot clean properly and your brain can't do everything it needs to do. Also, if you're a person that wakes up with an alarm clock, please look at your sleep patterns and see if you can bypass an alarm clock. It might sound counterintuitive. It might mean waking up 10 minutes earlier without the alarm clock because you usually have a 90 minute sleep pattern throughout the night. So you go to bed and you know when you lie down, maybe you had a really, really busy day. Think about going to Canada's Wonderland as a kid and you go lie yeah. down in your bed and yeah. you're so exhausted and you're lying there and your body is, your brain's still awake, but you can't move because you're so tired. Yes. That's the first part of sleep. That's when your brain is awake, but your body is shut down. Then the second part of sleep is your brain is asleep and your body's asleep. The third part, that's when you're, I know, I'm so, I'm so sorry if it's, this is uh, geeky. But I love part, this. Yeah, <laughs> it's so intriguing. This is when your brain wakes up, 
but your body's asleep. This is this phase where most people sleepwalk because, um, oh. yeah, you, you, the, sorry, your, your brain is, sorry, the third part is your brain is asleep, your body's awake because the things you're thinking about, your body will do, but your brain doesn't know you're doing it. That's sleepwalking. And the fourth part, both parts wake up again. It's a 90 minute cycle. So if you can set your alarm clock to when all the 90 minutes is over, you'll wake up feeling refreshed. But if you are waking up during any other parts, there's hormones that are taking you through that full cycle. So if you wake up and you've got those hormones in you still that are telling you your brain should shut down, but your body's awake or your body should, should shut down and your brain's awake, you're gonna wake up with a groggy hormones in you, which makes you feel tired. Right. Okay. So you okay. want to know what your sleep patterns are. Please be careful with your sleep hygiene. If that's one thing I go to sleep It's funny. Uh, a few of us went on, on a trip to Cuba. Monica was on that trip with us too for, yep. for entrepreneurs. And the lady who's sitting beside me on the plane, Sandy, we were talking and I was tired. As soon as we finished the conversation, I fell asleep. She goes, I've never seen anyone do that before. Like when it's sleep time, Karen, it's sleep time. <laughs> Um, look, train your brain to do that. You should be able to fall asleep and stay asleep. And if you're not, figure out what it is that's holding you back from sleeping well. Because without sleep, your brain can't function. And if your brain can't function, you're not going to do a good job, and then you're not going to be able to sleep. So look after it. Mm -hmm. And what and what do you think about napping, Karen? Oh, I like is naps. That, you like naps, yeah. And you're what time are you up in the morning? You like the five a.m. You're a five a.m. clubber. I am, I am. But when it comes to naps, uh, mm -hmm. again, there's different research on it. Some say 20 minutes really for a nap is all you need. Some say get your 90 minute cycle in. And there's other research that says two to three hours. I don't take naps every day, but if I'm finding I'm tired, I mm -hmm. need a nap because why am I going to push myself, my body and my mind when I'm not at 100%? Go take a nap, let my body heal, let my brain heal decompress and then I'm, I'm better. So yeah, I'm a 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. My brain is on fire in the morning. Always know when your brain is supercharged and take advantage of that time. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. The power hour or two yeah. or three or however. So yeah. that that's an important thing I've learned from you as well. Like not to give that time to somebody else. Like oh, that's yeah. my time when the brain's on fire everybody yeah. they call it the power hour or your willpower mm -hmm. hour it's mm -hmm. usually two to three hours for most people it's in the morning it's not for everybody it's in the morning but most people it's in the morning often anywhere from 6 a.m to 6 a.m to 10 a.m give or take an hour either way keep that time to yourself and the most important things you need to do uh, whether or not it's building your business um, thinking of ideas and strategies look after and protect that time. That's not the time to be responding to emails or filing or washing your dishes. You can do all of that when your brain power is lower, but when you've got your brain on fire, utilize it. It's good for you and you can get so much more accomplished. Right. And Karen, would you agree that your brain is kind of like sometimes I'll, you know, depending on whatever's going on, if I'm worrying about something or whatever, I'll get up in the morning and I'm like, okay, I got to do all this stuff, but I feel drained and I don't, I don't feel that surge, but I know this is my time. Like, where is it? So I will get up and like wash the dishes. And then all of a sudden my brain's like, okay, it's almost <laughs> like, uh, what do you call it? Like when you're uh, priming a pump. Yeah. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Whatever you need, Just, whether it's coffee or washing the dishes or going for a walk, mm -hmm. use a little bit of that, but you're priming. It's not you're washing the dishes for the sake of. Right? Yes, you're that's right. Your, you're, you're kind of waking your brain up. That's okay. As long mm -hmm. as you don't do it for the entire three hours, whatever yeah. strategies work for you are all different. Figure out the strategies that work for you and maintain them. And the strategies that don't work, change it up. There's great information out there. Figure out different strategies. That That's how you win, right? Yeah, that's great. So you did a really fun post on your Instagram page. And it was a picture of you holding up a big sign that said, I had 50 wins. And then when you went down and read the rest of the post, it was and and I had those 50 wins all before noon today. Yeah. Let's <laughs> talk about that. So here's the <laughs> thing. <laughs> what do we constitute as a win? 
a win doesn't have to be winning a gold medal or achieving this huge, huge thing. Set your brain up for a bunch of little wins. I brushed my teeth. That's an awesome win, right? (laughs) I made my coffee. I didn't spill it. Way to go, Karen. But I know it sounds silly, but what if we were to be happy with all these little successes? Because here's the thing. Every time you win, your brain releases happy hormones. Why is it that you're only allowing your brain to release a happy hormone once a day when you can release it 30, 40, 50 times a day? As long as you're telling your brain you're winning, the happy hormones go off. And here's a really good tip. When you've got something to do, figure out where your 70% mark is, seven zero. Because after the 70% mark, your brain thinks it's gonna achieve that and it starts releasing those happy hormones for you. So if I have to file 100 pages of a document, or if I'm gonna read a book, for example, and I wanna read 100 pages of that book, I don't mark 100 pages, I mark the 100 pages, but I also mark page 70. Because from page 70, my brain now knows that the chances of me succeeding are really high and it begins to release those happy hormones for me. So take advantage if your brain's gonna release happy hormones and that's gonna increase your confidence and increase your chances of success. Count all your little wins as wins. Nobody, no, nobody has to know otherwise and nobody yeah. says that you can't, so count all your wins. I love it. And I love that you said how your brain doesn't know the difference. Like I could I could go up and accept an Oscar or I could jump for joy that I drank all I had all my vitamins. Doesn't you can. Know. Right. Yeah. Now there's different hormones that will go off, like the excitement and hormones and things if you're gonna be going for the Oscars. But yeah. if you set yourself up and say, if I take my vitamins, that's the best thing ever. And you take mm-hmm. your vitamins, your brain's going to say, wow, she did it. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Right? Oh, that's so Get good. those hormones going for you. Like, we're so good at having all the negative hormones, the fear and the self-doubt. And we let that tamper with mm-hmm. us. If there's a way to get those happy hormones going for you, your favor, why would you not at least try? So celebrate right. your minutes. So- You know what, I wanted to, speaking of fear and self-doubt, I also wanted to share that I love our relationship and I love, I am so grateful for all of the challenges that you have coached me through, especially in the last couple of months, because it's been really tough and, and watching, you know, what's happening with small business and all the fear that's out there. And we're all like hanging on, are we going to still have our businesses? What's going on? Um, You really helped me to take my passion for, you know, wanting to help kids (laughs) during this time and turn it into something that would also, you know, help my business and, so like Karen, it's, it's, I love how you think like you, you're not, I, I got to just tell you guys, you know, I call Karen quite a bit and we have these great chats. She never talks about COVID. You never talk about it. You don't talk about it. You don't talk about, we got to be careful because this might happen or this might not. It's always um, super positive and um you're always sharing. Oh, sorry. I think you're you're frozen here. The good old internet. <laughs> uh, there we go, that, Karen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can hear me. Um, okay. Yeah, but you're so positive. I like don't you don't dwell on I that watch, stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Please watch what you put into your brain. It doesn't know yeah. the difference between right or wrong. It doesn't know the difference. It, it's, it's like a funnel and you're putting stuff in. Don't, I, I would ask you to consider don't sit there and watch an hour's worth of the news if you don't need to. I like to watch CP24 if I have to. Everything's in point form and I get the most important details. And then if I wanna research something after, I will. But when all you get is negativity, that goes into that funnel and that's what you're feeding your brain. Look at for, look for different ways. So if you have to do the negative, find a positive. No, I don't speak about COVID. I very much know that it exists. My mm-hmm. husband has um, a weak immune system, so we're very careful, but that doesn't stop us from enjoying and, and looking at all the positivities. Go back to your mantras, go back to your gratitudes and fill your brain with happiness because that's going to release, happiness breeds happiness. Mm-hmm. So set yourself up for success. Yeah, and this is such a great time to implement those those practices 
because when things do go back to normal and we're writing out our gratitude stuff and we're doing those mantras to reinforce, like we're really, you know, in a sense, when I do these exercises, you're mothering yourself. Like you're, you're really taking care of yourself and, and we have to do that for ourselves as women. I think, you know, a lot of us walk around with guilt and feeling shameful and all this crap that doesn't serve a purpose. And sometimes that voice of encouragement and reinforcement, it just, it just needs to come from within. Not yeah. right. Like we, we can't look to other people to fill that for us. I agree with you. I speak about women having all of us having backpacks and the problem with the backpack is you can't see what's happening behind you. So right. often we allow others and ourselves to fill it with crap. And it's the negative. We're not pretty enough. We're not smart enough. We're not young enough. We're not this. We're not that. We're not that. But there's a hundred things that you are. And instead of focusing on the wonderful hundred things that you are, you're focusing on the two that you're not. And that we allow that to bring, bring ourselves down. And I think society is so awful sometimes to women and women can be so awful to women. Mm -hmm. Some of the conversations you have if you with two women, if you put two men and have that same conversation, it would sound absurd. And yet we do that. So find a tribe who supports you, who loves you, who accepts your quirkiness, whether or not it's, hey, Karen, Karen keeps talking <laughs> brains. I want to talk to her about it. Um, find a tribe that loves you for who you are and you love them in return. And when you find that tribe, I find so much of that competitive crap that we were dealing with goes away. There's a really good book that's called Strength Finder 2.0. And oh. that has your 30, it lists 34 different strengths that most people have. Go and read it or pull, pull, pull up a copy up off the internet, pull up a PDF about it and look at all the strengths. Why don't you, instead of saying, I don't own this, this and this, highlight all those wonderful things that you have as your strengths. I have um, little cheat sheets everywhere. One of the things I have is words that are words that make me happy. And I go through these every day and they're just simple words that make me happy. And before I start work, I go through this and it helps prime my brain. Another thing I do is I keep essential oils on my desk. As soon as I read the essential oil, we actually have one for busy women called Brain Booster. Um, yeah. I, Didn't I Crystal, a, Crystal develop that, right, from absolutely. Bloomus? It is yeah. fantastic. I'm not saying it because it's mine through Busy Women. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it, Crystal knew the right stuff to put in it. Yeah. And as soon as I smell that, it lights up my brain and starts turning on all of those, um, those lights in the hotel rooms. Figure out how you can support your brain. Yeah. Oh, this is fascinating, Karen. Oh, I, this is so much, yeah. again... I can talk about this till the cows come home. I <laughs> love the break. We might have to do a part two. Oh, that's so and, great. Yeah. And, you know, um, just as you were talking there, I was thinking about, you know, uh, women and, and also this whole thing with perfection and we have to do everything perfectly. So uh, before COVID, <laughs> before the before COVID time, I always thought, oh, if I had the time, I would love to have a podcast where I interviewed strong women who were entrepreneurs. And then when it happened, I thought, well, I could do a little treat yourself Tuesday thing and just do it on Facebook live. And now it's just like developing and I'm enjoying it so much. And, you know, the whole thing with comparison and trying to be perfect, there's a lot of comedians I love and I watch and I go on and I watch like Conan O'Brien and he's doing zoom calls for his tonight show. And I'm like, Hey man, his quality is as good as mine. <laughs> like I'm okay. <laughs> you know, it, like I don't feel like I have to be perfect to put out great content and oh. that this is also a fun little platform to experiment and see what it's like to interview other women. And it can be a springboard to something else in the future. Like it doesn't have to, be this big grandiose thing right it just it's fun that is, that is so important monica don't compare their best to your worst mm. and we do that as women and what i mean is we'll look at somebody at the academy awards who looks beautiful hair's done nails done earrings done, everything and we'll say oh we don't look like that but 
they had five people work on them for four hours and customize a dress that suits their body type. And we compare ourselves to that in such a horrible comparison. So just go do the best that you can. Be the best version of yourself. Don't compete with other people. I actually have a, a little quote. Can I read it to you about yeah. uh, competition? I yeah. love this quote. And it says, your competition isn't other people. I have quotes on my dad, um, on my screen. Um, mm -hmm. This is one, and I don't think I've actually ever shared this with anyone. But I love it. It says, your competition isn't other people. It's your procrastination, your ego, the unhealthy foods you consume, the knowledge you neglect, your lack of creativity, the negative behavior that you nurture. Compete against that. So it's all about <gasps> competing against yourself, not everyone else. Be the best wow. version of yourself. And when you know how to do better tomorrow, do better tomorrow. Wow, that's so powerful. I have goosebumps on my goosebumps when you read that. <laughs> I love it because it puts us yeah. on check. I don't need to be competing with the world. I need to be the best version of Karen. You need to be the best version of Monica. Donna yeah. needs to be the best version of Donna. And when you know better, do better. But don't kick yourself in the pants because you're not perfect. Because none of us, we're humans. By definition, mm -hmm. we're not meant to be perfect. Yeah. Oh, and you know what? That's a perfect way to wrap up. Yeah, I, I enjoyed love that. Answer. Thank you so much for having oh me. Oh my gosh, it was such a Thank privilege. Thank you. I loved it too. And Karen, are you uh, up for an Instagram after party? Oh, I'm always up to party. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so for everybody okay. who's watching, we are going to continue on Instagram Live for a little after party. Uh, and we'll do that in about five minutes. Sound good, Karen? Sounds fantastic. I oh. sorry, I can't see who's on, but thank you so much for being on. I enjoyed being here. Monica, let me just quickly say you're fantastic. Yeah. Thank you for giving people a forum and an opportunity. Thank you for sharing about how you've pivoted and and, and a little bit about your life. Uh, this was this was so much of fun. I appreciate oh, it. Oh good. I'm so glad, Karen. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Are you gonna wait, wait, are you gonna are you gonna end with the robot? Yeah, we should. Let's do the. Do, 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 do. You know what? I need to figure out how to stream music. Who remembers Funky Town? Put it on. Karen and I'll do a dance for you. Thing. Sorry, if we can end with yeah. that. Don't take it too seriously. No, it's serious not, is boring. Yeah, and it's not worth yeah. it. Like, enjoy life, enjoy laughing, mm -hmm. enjoy your friendships, and, and yeah. Have so and speaking of laughing i want everybody to go on your instagram page and look at your covid hair oh <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I there's I, a good I, post with my glasses and my hair right <laughs> <laughs> go check it out thank you yeah. so much enjoy yourself and look after your brain and it in return will look after you yeah awesome thanks thank karen you, all right take care bye, bye. everybody take bye. care <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us. So I will be uploading this video uh, to my IGTV page. I'll be uploading it to um, YouTube and creating a library where you can go back and listen to it over and over again, because who wouldn't want to listen to Karen over and over again? Thank you so much for everything. Uh, thank you for shopping the Glam Jewels website. Let me know if you have any questions at all. And love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you next Tuesday.